Hare Krishna, dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just near the English Channel. Um, we hope you're all safe and sound and, and well and happy. Uh, we'll get right into it now. Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram from Sri Krishna Lila Stava. The author is Srila Sanatan Goswami and he wrote this five verse stotra uh, to glorify the Srimad Bhagavatam. It goes like this Sarva Shastra Dipi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dvandoditaditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varsha Ksharayate, Sarvada Sarvasevyaya, Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you, who is supremely blissful to read. Your every, your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madhika Bando Matsangin Madguro Mad Mahadana Manishtadaga Mad Bhagya Mad Ananda Namostute My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhuta dayin atini chuchata kada hanamun chagada chen mam prem narit kanta yukspura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Okay, we reach the first can, the twelfth chapter of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, Maharaj Prikshit has entered the scene and he has been glorified at his birth by the astrologers, the great astrologers. Um, and now we're proceeding with the history. We're, we're starting with text 32. <clears throat> Just at this time, King Yudhishthir was considering performing a horse sacrifice to, to get freed from sins incurred from fighting with kinsmen. But he became anxious to get some wealth, for there were no surplus funds outside of fines and tax collection. Purport As the Brahmanas and Vipras had a right to be subsidized by the state. The state executive head had the right to collect taxes and fines from the citizens. After the Battle of Kurukshetra, the state treasury was exhausted and therefore there were no sur surplus funds except the funds from tax collection 
and fines. Such funds were sufficient only for the state budget, and having no excess funds, the king was anxious to get more wealth in, in some other way in order to perform the horse sacrifice. Maharaj Yudhishthir wanted to perform this sacrifice under the instruction of Bhishmadev. Text 33 Understanding the hearty wishes of the king, his brothers, as advised by the infallible Lord Krishna, collected abundant riches from the north, left by King Maruta. Purport Maharaj Maruta, one of the great emperors of the world. He reigned over the world long before the reign of Maharaj Yudhishthir. He was the son of Maharaj Avikshit and was a great devotee of the son of the sun god known as Yamaraj. His brother Sambharta was a rival priest of the great Brihaspati, the learned priest of the demigods. He conducted a, he conducted a sacrifice called Sankara Yagya by which the Lord was so satisfied that he was pleased to hand over to him the charge of a mountain peak of gold. This peak of gold is somewhere in the Himalaya mountains and modern adventurers may try to find it there. He was so powerful an emperor that at the day's end of sacrifice, the demigods from the other planets like Indra, Chandra and Brihaspati used to visit his palace. And because he had the gold peak at his disposal, he had ample gold in his possession. The canopy of the sacrificial altar was completely made of gold. In his daily performances of the sacrificial performance ceremonies, some of the inhabitants of the Vayuloka, the airy planets, were invited to expedite the cooking work of the ceremony. And the assembly of the demigods in the ceremony was led by Vishwadev. By his constant pious work, he was able to drive out all kinds of diseases from the jurisdiction of his kingdom. All the inhabitants of higher planets like Devaloka and Pitriloka were pleased with him for his great sacrificial performances. Every day he used to give in charity to the learned brahmanas such things as beddings, seats, conveyances and great quantities of gold. Because of munificent charities and performances of innumerable sacrifices, the king of heaven, Indradev, was fully satisfied with him and always wished for his welfare. Due to his pious activities, he remained a young man throughout his life and reigned over the world for 1,000 years, surrounded by his satisfied subjects, ministers, legitimate wife, sons, and brothers. Even Lord Sri Krishna praised his spirit of pious activities. He handed over his only daughter to Maharshi Angira, and by Angira's good blessings, he was elevated to the kingdom of heaven. First of all, he wanted to offer the priesthood of his sacrifices to learned Brihaspati, but the demigod refused to accept the post because of the king's being a human being, a man of this earth. He was very sorry for this, but on the advice of Narada Muni, he appointed Sambharta to the post and he was successful in his mission. The success of a particular type of sacrifice completely depends on the priest in charge. In this age, all kinds of sacrifice are forbidden because there is no learned priest amongst the so-called brahmanas who go by the false notion of being brahmanas by virtue of being sons of brahmanas, but who lack brahminical qualifications. In this age of Kali, therefore, only one kind of sacrifice is recommended, Sankirtan Yagya, as inaugurated by Lord Sri by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Text 34. <clears throat> With those riches, 
the king could proceed, pr procure the ingredients for three horse sacrifices. Thus the pious king Yudhishthir, who was very fearful after the battle of Kurukshetra, pleased Lord Hari, the personality of Godhead. Purport Maharaj Yudhishthir was the ideal and celebrated pious king of the world. And still he was greatly afraid of the execution of the battle of Kurukshetra because of the mass killing in the fight, all of which was done only to install him on the throne. He therefore took all the responsibility for sins committed in the warfare and to get rid of these sins and to get rid of all these sins he wanted to perform three sacrifices in which horses were offered on the altar. Such a sacrifice is very costly. Even Maharaj Yudhishthir had to collect the necessary heaps of gold left by Maharaj Maruta and the Brahmanas who had been given gold in charity by King Maruta. The learned Brahmanas could not take away all the loads of gold given by Maharaj Maruta and therefore they left behind the major portion of the gift. And Maharaj Maruta also did not again collect such heaps of gold given away in charity. Besides that, all the golden plates and utensils which are used in the sacrifice were also thrown in the dustbins <laughs> and all such heaps of gold remained unclaimed property for a long time till Maharaj Yudhishthir collected them for his own purposes. Lord Sri Krishna advised the brothers of Maharaj Yudhishthir to collect the unclaimed property because it belonged to the king. The more astonishing thing is that no subject of the state also collected such unclaimed gold for industrial enterprise or anything like that. This means that the state citizens were completely satisfied with all necessities of life and therefore not inclined to accept unnecessary productive enterprises for sense gratification. Maharaj Yudhishthir also requisitioned the heaps of gold for performing sacrifices and for pleasing the Supreme Hari, the Personality of Godhead. Otherwise, he had no desire to collect them for the state treasury. One should take lessons from the acts of Maharaj Yudhishthir. He was afraid of sins committed on, committed on the battlefield and therefore he wanted to satisfy the Supreme Authority. This indicates that unintentional sins are also committed in our daily occupational discharge of duties and to counteract even such unintentional crimes one must perform sacrifices as they are recommended in the revealed scriptures. The Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita Yagyartat kamanonyatra lokoyam karmabandhanaha that one must perform sacrifices recommended in the scriptures in order to get rid of commitments of all unauthorized work or even unintentional crimes which we are apt to commit. By doing so, one shall be freed from all kinds of sins. And those who do not do so, but work for self-interest or sense gratification, have to undergo all tribulations accrued from committing sins, from the committed sins. Therefore, the main purpose of performing sacrifices is to satisfy the Supreme Personality, Hari. The process of performing sacrifices may be different in, the, in terms of different times, places, and persons, but the aim of such sacrifices is one and the same at all times and in all circumstances, that is, satisfaction of the Supreme Lord Hari. That is the way of pious life and that is the way of peace and prosperity in the world at large. Maharaj Yudhishthir did all these <clears throat> Maharaj Yudhishthir did all these as the ideal pious king in the world. If Maharaj Yudhishthir is a sinner in his daily discharge of duties 
and royal administration of state affairs, wherein killing of animals is a recognized art, then we can just imagine the amount of sins committed consciously or unconsciously by the untrained population of the Kali Yuga, who are not performing any sacrifices to please the Supreme Lord. The Bhagavatam says, therefore, that the prime duty of the human being is to satisfy the Supreme Lord by the performance of one's occupational duty. That's Bhagavatam 1 2, 13. Let any man of any place or community, caste or creed, be engaged in any sort of occupational duty, but he must agree to perform sacrifices as it is recommended in the scriptures for the particular time, place, time, and person. In the Vedic literatures, it is recommended that in Kali Yuga, people engage in glorifying the Lord by chanting the holy name of Krishna without offense, and that by doing so, one can be freed from all sins and thus can attain the highest perfection of life by returning home, back to Godhead, Kirtanad, Eva Krishnasya, Mukta Sangha, Param Bajet. We have, we have already discussed this more than once in this great literature in different places, especially in the introductory portion by sketching the life of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And, and still we are repeating the same with a view to bring about peace and prosperity in society. The Lord has declared openly in the Bhagavad Gita how He becomes pleased with us. And the same process is practically demonstrated in the life and preaching work of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> the perfect process of performing yajyas or sacrifice to please the Supreme Lord Hari, the Personality of Godhead, who, get, who gets us free from all miseries of existence, is to follow the ways of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this dark age of quarrel and dissension. Maharaj Yudhishthir had to collect heaps of gold to, to secure the paraphernalia for the horse sacrifice yajyas in days of sufficiency. So we can hardly think of such performances, performance of yajyas, in these days of insufficiency and complete scarcity of gold. At the present moment, we have heaps of papers and promises of their being converted into gold by economic development of modern civilization. And still, there is no possibility of spending riches like Maharaj Yudhisthira either individually or collectively, or by state patronization. Just suitable for the age, therefore, is the method recommended by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in terms of the Shastra. Such a method requires no expen expenditure at all, and yet can award more benefit than other expensive methods of yoga performances. The horse sacrifice yajna or cow sacrifice yajna performed by the Vedic regulations shouldn't be misunderstood as a process for killing animals. On the contrary, animals offered for the yajna were rejuvenated to a new, life, a new span of life by the transcendental power of chanting the Vedic hymns, which, if properly chanted, are different from, are different from what is understood by the common layman. The Vedic mantras are all practical and the proof is rejuvenation of the sacrificed animal. There is no possibility of such methodical chanting of the Vedic hymns by the so-called brahmanas or priests of the present age. The untrained descendants of the twice-born families are not like their forefathers and thus they are counted amongst the shudras or once-born men. The once-born man is unfit to chant the Vedic hymns and therefore there is no practical utility of chanting the original hymns. And to save them all, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu propounded the Sankirtan movement or yajna 
for, the, for, the, for all practical purposes. And the people of the present age are strongly recommended to follow this sure and recognized path. Text 35 Lord Sri Krishna, the Personality of Godhead, being invited to the sacrifices by Maharaj Yudhishthira, saw to it that they were performed by qualified, twice-born brahmanas. After that, for the pleasure of the relatives, the Lord remained a few months. <clears throat> Purport Lord Sri Krishna was invited by Maharaj Yudhishthira to look into the supervision of the performances of yajna, and the Lord, to abide by the orders of his elder cousin, caused the performance of yajnas by learned twice-born brahmanas. Simply by taking, simply taking birth in the family of a brahmana does not make one qualified to perform yajnas. One must be twice-born by proper training and initiation from the bona fides acharya. The once-born scions of Brahmana families are equal with the once-born Shudras. And such Brahmana Bandhus, Brahma Bandhus, or unqualified once-born men have no right to accept the priesthood for performing any kind of fruity sacrifice. Such once-born scions must be rejected for any purpose of religious or Vedic function. Lord Sri Krishna was entrusted to look after this arrangement and perfect as he is, he caused the yajnas to be performed by the bona fide twice-born brahmanas for successful execution. Text 36 O Shanaka, O Shanaka, Thereafter, the Lord having bidden farewell to Yudhishthira, Draupadi, and other relatives started for the city of Dwarka, accompanied by Arjuna and members of the Yadu dynasty. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the first canto, twelfth chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled Birth of Emperor Parikshit. All glories to the birth of Maharaj um, Parikshit. All glories to the reign of King Yudhishthira and the sacrifices he performed for the satisfaction of Sri Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hare Krishna. Okay, we have plenty of time left, so we will continue to chapter 13. Dhritarashtra quits home. Very interesting chapter. Sri Sutta Goswami said, While traveling on a pilgrimage, <clears throat> Vidura received knowledge of the destination of the Self from the great sage Maitreya and then returned to Hastinapur. He became as well versed in the subject as he desired. Purport Vidura, one of the prominent figures in the history of the Mahabharata, he was conceived by Vyasadeva in the womb of the maidservant of Ambika, mother of Maharaj Pandu. He is one of the incarnation. He is the incarnation of Yamaraj, who was cursed by Manduka Muni to become a Shudra. The story is narrated as follows. Once upon a time, the state police caught some thieves who had concealed themselves in the hermitage of Manduka Muni. The police constables, as usual, arrested all the thieves and Manduka Muni along with them. The magistrate specifically punished the Muni to death by being pierced with a lance. When he was just to be pierced, the news reached the king, and he at once stopped the act on consideration of his being a great Muni. The king personally begged the Muni's pardon for the mistake of his men, and the saint at once went to Yamaraj, who prescribes the destiny of living beings. 
Yamaraj, being questioned by the Muni, replied that the Muni in his childhood pierced an ant with a sharp air straw, and for, the re for that reason he was put into difficulty. The Muni thought it unwise on the part of Yamaraj that he was punished for his childish innocence, and thus the Muni cursed Yamaraj to become a Shudra, and this Shudra incarnation of Yamaraj is known as Vidura, the Shudra brother of Dhritarashtra and Maharaj Pandu. Hmm. But this Shudra son of the Kuru dynasty was equally treated by Bhishma Dev, along with his elder, uh, ne along with his other nephews, and in due course, Vidura was married with a, with with a girl who was also begotten in the womb of a Shudrani by a Brahmana. Although Vidura did not inherit the property of his father, the brother of Bhishma Dev, still he was given sufficient state property by Dhritarashtra, the elder brother of Vidura. Vidura was very much attached to his elder brother, and all, all along he tried to guide him on the right path. During the fratricidal war of Kurukshetra, Vidura repeatedly implored his elder brother to do justice to the sons of Pandu, but Duryodhana did not like such interference by his uncle, and thus he practically insulted Vidura. The result, this resulted in Vidura leaving home for pilgrimage and taking instructions from Maitreya. Text 2 After asking various questions and becoming established in the transcendental loving service of Lord Krishna, Vidura retired from putting questions to Maitreya Muni. Purport Vidura retired from putting questions before Maitreya Muni when he was convinced by Maitreya Rishi that the summum bonum of life is to, finally, is to be finally situated in the transcendental loving service of Lord Sri Krishna, who is Govinda, or one who satisfies the devotee, his devotees in all respects. The conditioned soul, the living being in material existence, seeks happiness by employing his senses in the modes of materialism, but that cannot give him satisfaction. He then searches after the supreme truth by the empiric, philosophic, speculative method and intellectual feats. But, he does not, but if he does not find the ultimate goal, he again goes down to, the, to material activities and engages himself in various philanthropic and altruistic works, which also fail to give him satisfaction. So neither fruitive activities nor dry philosophical speculation can give one satisfaction because by nature a living being is the eternal servitor of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna and all the Vedic literatures give him direction towards that ultimate end. The Bhagavad Gita 1515 confirms this statement. Like Vidura, an, in, in, an inquisitive conditioned soul must approach a bona fide spiritual master like Maitreya and by intelligent inquiries must try to know everything about karma, fruitive activities, jnana, philosophical research for the supreme truth and yoga, the linking process of spiritual realization. One who, one who is not seriously inclined to put questions before a spiritual master need not accommodate a show, bo show bottle spiritual master, nor should a person who may be a spiritual master for others pose to be so if he is unable to engage his disciples ultimately in the transcendental loving service of Lord Sri Krishna. Vidura was successful in approaching such a spiritual master like Maitreya and he got the ultimate goal of life, bhakti unto Govinda. Thus, there was nothing to be known further about spiritual progress. 
text 3 and 4. <clears throat> when they saw Bidura return to the palace, all the inhabitants, Mar Mara Yudhishthir, his younger brothers, Bhitarastra, Satyaki, Sanjaya, Kripacharya, Kunti, Gandhari, Draupadi, Subhadra, Uttara, Kripi, and many other wives of the Kauravas and other ladies with children all hurried to him in great delight. It so appeared that they had regained their consciousness after a long period. Purport. Gandhari. Now we're going to have a list in the purport of all these personalities who were so happy to see Vidura return to the palace. So we may not be able to finish this purport, but we will go as far as, far as we can. Purport. Gandhari, the, the ideal chaste lady in the history of the world. She was the daughter of Maharaj Subala, the king of Gandhara, a kingdom encompassing what are now the cities of Kandahar and Kabul. And in her maiden state, she worshipped Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is generally worshipped by Hindu maidens to get a good husband. Gandhari satisfied Lord Shiva and by his benediction to obtain 100 sons. She was betrothed to Dhritarashtra, despite of his being blind forever. When Gandhari came to know that her future husband was blind, was a blind man, to follow her life companion, she decided to become voluntarily blind. So she wrapped up her eyes with many silken linens, and she was married to Dhritarashtra under the guidance of her elder brother, Shakuni. She was the most beautiful girl of her time, and she was equally qualified by her womanly qualities, which endeared her to every member of the Korava court. But despite all her good qualities, she had the natural frailties of a woman, and she was envious of Kunti when the latter gave birth to a male child. Both the queens were pregnant, but Kunti first gave birth to a male child. Thus Gandhari became angry and gave a blow to her abdomen. As a result, she gave birth to a lump of flesh only. But since she was a devotee of Vyasadeva, by the instruction of Vyasadeva, the lump was divided into 100 parts and each part gradually developed to become a male child. Thus her ambition to become the mother of 100 sons was fulfilled and she began to nourish all the children according to her exalted position. When the intrigue of the battle of Kurukshetra was going on, she was not in favor of fighting with the Pandavas. Rather, she blamed Dhritarashtra, her husband, for such a fratricidal war. She desired that the state be divided into two parts, for the sons of Pandu and her own. She was very affected when all her sons died in the battle of Kurukshetra and she wanted to curse Bhimasang and Yudhishthir, but she was checked by Vyasadeva. A mourning over the death of Duryodhana and Dushashana before Lord Krishna was very pitiful, and Lord Krishna pacified her by transcendental messages. She was equally aggrieved on the death of Karna, and she described to Lord Krishna the lament lamentation of Karna's wife. She was pacified by Srila Vyasadeva when she showed her dead sons. She was pacified by Srila Vyasadeva when he showed her dead when he showed her dead sons, then promoted to the heavenly kingdoms. She died along with her husband in the jungles of the Himalayas near the source of the Ganges. She burned in a, in a forest fire. Mara Yudhishthira performed the death ceremony of his uncle and aunt. Prita, daughter of Maharaj Shurasena 
and sister of Vasudev, Lord Krishna's father. Later she was adopted by Maharaj Kunti Bhoja, and hence she is known as Kunti. She is the incarnation of the success potency of the Personality of Godhead. The heavenly denizens from the upper planets used to visit the palace of King Kunti Bhoja, and Kunti was engaged for their reception. She also served the great mystic sage Durvasa, and being satisfied by her faithful service, Durvasa Muni gave her a mantra by which it was possible for her to, for her to call any demigod she pleased. As a matter of inquisitiveness, she at once called for the sun god who desired couplement with her, but, he, but she declined. But the sun god assured her immunity from virgin adulteration and so she agreed to this proposal. As a result of this couplement, she became pregnant and Karna was born by her. By the grace of the sun, she again turned into a virgin girl but being afraid of her parents, she quitted the newly born child, Karna, and after that, when she actually selected her own husband, she preferred Pandu to be her husband. Maharaj Pandu later wanted to retire from family life and adopt the renounced order of life. Kunti refused to allow her husband to adopt such a life, but at last, Maharaj Pandu gave her permission to become a mother of sons by calling some other suitable personalities. Kunti did not accept this proposal at first, but when vivid examples were, were set by Pandu, she agreed. Thus, by dint of the mantra uh, awarded by Durvasa Muni, she called for Dharmaraj, and thus Yudhishthir was born. She called for the demigod Vayu, heir, and thus Bhima was born. She called for Indra, the king of heaven, and thus Arjuna was born. The two other sons, named Nukula and Sahadev, were begotten by Pandu himself in the, in the womb of Madri. Later on, Maharaj Pandu died at an early age, for which Kunti was so aggrieved that she fainted. The two co-wives, namely Kunti and Madri, decided that Kunti should live for the maintenance of the five minor children. The Pandavas and Madri should accept the Sati ritual, meeting voluntary death by being burned along with her husband's body. This agreement was endorsed by great sages like Shatashringa and others present on the occasion. Later on, when the Pandavas were banished from the kingdom by the intrigues of Duryodhana, Kunti followed her sons, and she equally faced all sorts of difficulties during those days. During the forest life, one demon girl, Hidimba, wanted Bhima as her husband. Bhima refused, but when the girl approached Kunti and Yudhishthir, they ordered Bhima to accept her proposal and give her a son. As a result of this combination, Gatotkacha was born. And he fought very valiantly with his father against the Kauravas. In their forest life, they lived with a Brahmana family that was in trouble because of one Bakasura demon. And Kunti ordered Bhima to kill the Bakasura to protect the Brahmana family, against troubles created by the demons. She advised Yudhisthira to start for Panchaladesh. Panchaladesh. Draupadi was gained in this Panchaladesh by Arjuna, and by, but by the order of Kunti, all five of the Pandava brothers became equally the husbands of Panchali, or Draupadi. She was married with five Pandavas in the presence of Vyasadeva. Kunti Devi never forgot her first child Karna and after Karna's death in the battle of Kurukshetra she admit, lamented and admitted before her other sons that Karna was her eldest son 
prior to her marriage with Maharaj Pandu. Her prayers for the Lord after the battle of Kurukshetra, when Lord Krishna was going back home, were, are excellently explained. Later, she went to the forest with Gandhari for severe penance. She used to take meals after every 30 days. She finally sat down in profound meditation and later burned to ashes in a forest fire. And when, tomorrow we will hear about Draupadi and the others. But for now, we'll stop our reading of the Srimad Bhagavatam and ask the assembled sages, the Vaishnavas in attendance to please uh, give us their reflections on these wonderful topics of all these exalted personalities and the histories of their lives. Hare Krishna. Okay. First up this evening is Rati Manjari. Rati, Hari Bol, first off the block. Fantastic. Jai Guru Maharaj, back to read with abandon. Back to read with abandon. Yes. Hare Krishna. And from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Yes, Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, and all assembled devotees, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. All glories to His Divine Grace. These purports are so informative and give us you really the essence of all of the Puranas and all of the Mahabharata and so on. There may be more details in other scriptures, but the, the amount of detail in, pur pur in Prabhupada's purports of the Srimad Bhagavatam are sufficient to satisfy uh, anyone with a satisfied heart, a, a sincere heart. Hare Krishna. And from Braj Balaba. Hare Baba Braj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Lanka. Jai, all glories to divine, divine Grace. Hare Krishna to you. Many congratulations on the CC audio files being submitted to the BBT. Thank you, thank you. May this be the first of many audio books. May it be Hare so. Krishna. May your words come true. Thank you very much. We have the will and hopefully we'll have the way also. And from Vijay Krishna. Jai Vijay Krishna. Related to King Yudhishthir performing a horse sacrifice to get freed from sins, my question is, what is the recommended process in the age of Kali for me to get freed from sins? <laughs> Please. This is described in the 12th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Kirtanan at Krishna Sya Mukta Sangha Param Brajet. Uh, that this age of Kali is uh, full of faults of all descriptions but despite all of its faults there's one good quality Kirtanad eva krishnasya muktasanga param bajet that simply by performing the Sankirtan Yagya of chanting the holy names of the Lord one can get all perfection it's so glorious this Kali Yuga in this age that even the demigods sometimes pray to take birth in the earth on this Kali, at this Kali time in Kali Yuga so that they can perform the Sankirtan Yagya. So that's what you can do to achieve the results of all sacrifices, even the great Soma sacrifices of uh, Ashramedha, Gomeda sacrifices. Hare Krishna. From Daitari Hari. Daitari Hari, Hari Bo. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Jai, all glories to His Divine Grace. 
We heard tonight about how there is no possibility of us being able to gather the paraphernalia or find qualified people to conduct the ashramada sacrifice performed by Yudhishthir, but that by chanting Hare Krishna without offenses, we exceed the effects of such sacrifices. <coughs> On the surface it seems simple, but in order to get the actual effect, we obviously need to be chanting properly. I worry sometimes I'm not doing it properly. <laughs> That's called transcendental anxiety. If you're worried that you're not chanting Hare Krishna properly, that is called transcendental anxiety. And it can be made productive by honing your uh, chanting, by refining your chanting. It means chant at the same time every day, early in the morning and put aside any other activities and just concentrate on hearing the sound of all of the uh, 16 names of the Hare Krishna mantra, the 32 syllables of the Hare Krishna mantra. Just Prabhupada told us, this was his way of explaining how to chant. He said, just try to meditate on the sound of the holy name and and uh, articulate each name clearly. You may chant very fast, that's okay, but each name should be articulated clearly and one should meditate, meaning one should hear the sound with rapt attention, meaning that the mind should not do anything else. So we should try our best not to be distracted by doing other things while we're chanting and try to, try to concentrate the mind on the chanting. That means, concentrating the mind on the chanting means that your mind is doing the same thing as your tongue is doing. That, that your mind isn't doing one thing and the chanting is another. And by chanting like this uh, properly, one can get the result of thousands of Ashramedha sacrifices. One can get pure love of God, which is more than one can get from, from performing so many horse sacrifices. It's the supreme pious activity, the supreme spiritual activity. Hadir nama, hadir nama, hadir nama eva kevalam, kalo nasteva, nasteva. Nastavya, Gatya Anyata. In this age of Kali, uh, one is recommended to chant the holy name of the Lord, chant the holy name of the Lord, chant the holy name of the Lord. There is no other way. Nasteva, Nasteva, Nasteva. Three times. Three times the holy name and three times uh, the only. Uh, activity that can get Gata Anyata, the supreme goal of life. Hare Krishna. From Ananda Murti Devi Dasi. Jai Ananda Murti Hare Krishna. Jai Guru Dev, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Jai, glories to Prabhupada. Thank you so much for today's readings. Today I heard that Harinam Sankirtan is more powerful than big horse sacrifices, <laughs> which are very, very expensive. All glories to Harinam Sankirtan Yagya. All glories to Harinam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. And I would make one more comment, and that is, as stated in the Bhagavad Gita in the 10th chapter where Krishna explains his vibhutis that the supreme sacrifice is japa. So chanting the Hare Krishna mantra without offense on the japa beads initiated by the bona fide spiritual master one can achieve all the results all good fortune and can uh, uncover one's love of God and go back to the kingdom of God in this lifetime. 
That is Śrīla Prabhupāda's promise to us. And he's so dear to Krishna that when he makes a promise like that, Krishna feels obliged to fulfill that promise. Hare Krishna. Gauranga Gopal. Haribo Gauranga Gopal, our hero. Dear Maharaj, thank you so much for reading tonight. Hearing about all these great personalities from the Mahabharata is just the best. Mm. When we hear of them, it sounds so mythological at first, but we have such limited vision now in this age of Kali, mm. where almost no one demonstrates such great qualities of chastity, humility, surrender, like mm. they are. Mm. I feel humbled, though, when I actually observe such qualities in devotees within ISKCON. Such amazing association, Srila Prabhupada's mercy, Hare Krishna. Absolutely, and Prabhupada explained to us also that because the, we're talking, these, these personalities, you know, appeared before the begin, beginning, of, just before the beginning of Kali Yuga. So they had qualities, great qualities. And so, but in this Kali age, the external uh, how do you say the external manifestation of these good qualities is not so as apparent as it was in previous other previous ages but the the qualities of that are described in the in the Bhagavad Gita in the beginning of the 16th chapter all the different qualities of piety uh, divine qualities which Krishna promised Arjuna he was born with, are manifested to, you know, not as big a degree as externally before, because before the earth planets was more potent, therefore the water and the air and the vegetables and fruits and grains were all more potent because they came from an earth which was not so... Uh, degraded and and uh, and abused as the earth is being done today by the so-called scientific methods of improving the quantity and so-called quality of the grains and and other agricultural products by mass production and whatever what are they called uh, modifying them genetically CMO, GMO, just just so they look perfect, and when you bite into them, they taste, they taste like plastic, you know. So therefore, we shouldn't expect uh, even devotees to manifest those qualities in, to the same degree externally, but they will manifest the potency of being able to make other people devotees, and that is the supreme mystic perfection. And we see it every day happening in this great movement of Śrīla Prabhupāda. Devotees going out and taking the trouble to distribute books to as many people as they can and with the potency to do it, and they do it. Hare Krishna. And the question from Gauranga Gopal. Gauranga Gopal, Hare Krishna. Also, I wondered... What was meant when Śrīla Prabhupāda mentioned that Kunti Devi was the incarnation of the success potency of the Personality of Godhead? All of Krishna's potencies are personified in the spiritual world. And Kunti was the personification of uh, one of Krishna's qualities, the success potency. And therefore, despite all of the difficulties she went through, she ended up being always exalted and always empowered. Yes, and we heard how she attained the exalted destination by her exalted austerities. Hare Krishna. From Vrajaloka. Haribo Vrajaloka. 
Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai, glory to Sri the Prabhupada. All glories to you and all glories to the transcendental CC audio book. Yes. We heard, we hear about this evening that we should be seriously inclined to put questions before a spiritual master. Can you please say something about what does it mean exactly? to be serious in our inquiring and how we can develop the proper attitude in this process. Thank you so much, Vasudeva. Well, I think I read the other day from uh, the first uh, chapter of the Adi Lila of Chaitanya Charitamrita, verse 55, where it describes that the single uh, quality of submissiveness uh, taken to perfection is sufficient is the only thing that can bring one to the point of perfection in devotional service that they can meet Krishna face to face as a man meets another man face to face so submissiveness is the quality and Krishna s explains it very e simply and clearly in the Bhagavad Gita tadvidi pani partina pari prashnena sevaya so, tadvidi pani patina, pari prashtena sevya means hearing uh, submissively and rendering service. Uh, this is the, the process of uh, achieving the knowledge that was, that's given by the spiritual master. Uh, and then in the next verse, Krishna says that once one has actually achieved that knowledge, in other words, if we, if we hear receptively and submissively, and in the purport to that famous verse, Prabhupada explains a little bit about, in more detail about that. He says that blind following and absurd inquiries are condemned in the process of, 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 of spiritual life and also that one must not just hear from the spiritual master but one should get a, 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 a clear meaning an understanding a clear uh, understanding of what the spiritual master is teaching in other words just as all of these scriptures are formatted in a way that it's based on, on, on submissive inquiry, questions and answers, questions and answers, questions and answers. Uh, so that is the process for attaining a spiritual realization. To get the clear meaning from the spiritual master means if, one, if he tells you something that you don't understand, then you have to inquire. And if you still don't understand, you inquire again. And you still don't understand, you acquire again until you understand. That's what it means to get a clear understanding from the spiritual master. And Srila Prabhupada's books are so expertly done that he repeats the same basic knowledge again and again exactly for this purpose so that we can hear it maybe a little differently uh, explained by different personalities in different terms of s different circumstances uh, and the repeated hearing of those things meaning reading the Bhagavatam cover to cover uh, again and again while we're in this material tabernacle will give us all perfection because the answers keep coming and coming a little different little different but same so that we understand something thoroughly. To get a clear meaning from the spiritual master means you must understand the subject matter thoroughly. And that requires repeated inquiry until one actually understands. And what is the test? Next verse, you will not fall into illusion again when you've actually received this knowledge because you will see that every living being is simply a part and parcel of the Supreme, or in other words, Krishna says, they are mine. So every living being is 
belongs to Krishna. And therefore, we should treat all the living beings with proper respect according to their respective positions. Not that we go out and embrace a tiger because he's a part of Krishna. We, we respect the, the, the soul and the body of the tiger and the super soul and the body of the tiger from a distance, from a great distance, <laughs> in fact. But that respect must come from within the heart. That is the place of spiritual advancement and therefore spiritual perfection. Purified heart. By chanting the holy name of the Lord offenselessly, one's heart is purified. And the symptom of that purified heart is that when we hear the name and we hear the pastimes of the Lord, our heart melts. And the first sign is we become very satisfied. We're, we're, sat, we're fascinated by this information and by these uh, descriptions in, in Shastra. And by repeated hearing and chanting over a long period of time, as Kapiladev said to his mother, over a long, seriously hearing over a long period of time from the proper source, one can overcome the uh, conditioning of material existence and see the difference between the soul and the mind. And with that knowledge of the difference between the soul and the intelligence and the body and the mind and, and everything, then one gets spiritual strength and can conquer lust. Which is our only enemy. No one else is our enemy. Hare Krishna. Subhrao Raja Gopal. Subhrao Raja Raja Gopal. Hari Bol, Hari Bol. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Jai, all glories to His Divine Grace. Thank you for reading daily the Granthraj Srimad Bhagavatam and the glorious purports of Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for hearing. While you were reading about Gandhari, quote, this Gandhari became angry and gave a blow to her own abdomen, unquote. We know from Purana this led to the birth of 100 Kauravas in the fratricidal war. I remember the Bhagavad Gita verse 1621 Trividam Narakasyedam Dwaram Atmanaha Kama Krodas Tata Lobhas Tasmade Tatrayam Tyajet There are three gates leading to this hell lust, anger, and greed. Mm. Every sane man should give these up for they lead to the degradation of the soul. Hmm. My question is, how do we manage or control anger? Thank you. Well, Bhishma Dev explained this and you can see it in the ninth chapter. We already, we already read the ninth chapter not too long ago. In the 27th verse of the, of the ninth chapter of the first canto of Bhagavatam. And there it is said, and this sounds like a very simple answer, but it is very profound. One can overcome anger by learning how to forgive. And we have the example of Draupadi, uh, among others, uh, when Ashwatthama was brought before her by Arjuna after he had promised that she could stand on his head, on his separated from his body, and take bath, you know, in order to get solace from him, his killing her five sons. She forgave him because he was the relative of a of a teacher of of her husband's. Yonacharya was a teacher of the five Pandavas. And therefore, because he was in that exalted uh, family, she felt compassion and forgave him. And also, 
one of the major reasons she did that was because she didn't want to see uh, the mother of Ashwatthama suffer the way she was suffering. So these are the symptoms of great souls. They don't want to see others suffering. This is the, the result of our suffering should be that we should uh, act in such a way as to help others uh, be relieved from suffering. That means preaching Krishna consciousness. And preaching Krishna consciousness, explaining these uh, uh, truths to others, pleases Krishna the most. So whatever you're thinking, how do I give, overcome anger? How do I overcome so many things? Uh, negative material qualities of which all of us in this Kali Yuga are, are uh, filled with. Then we can overcome uh, these negative qualities by following the instructions of, of those who, who give the, the instructions in an empowered way. It, it all, everything depends on our sincerity. If you sincerely try, then Krishna appreciates and reciprocates accordingly and purifies our hearts and allows us to taste the uh, effects of, of spiritual activity on the soul. On the, on the heart of the conditioned soul, rather. Hare Krishna. Rati Manjari. Hare Bo Rati. <clears throat> Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I am guilty of offensive chanting every day, but you make my evenings worthwhile because you take me along the transcendental stream of hearing Srimad <laughs> Bhagavatam. Thank you greatly for your munificence. Well, your statement proves that you're not actually in the offensive stage, you're in the clearing stage. Because people who are in the offensive stage, they can't realize that they're chanting with offense. People in the, the devotees in the clearing stage can understand they're making offenses and they make efforts to avoid offenses. So congratulations from coming to the clearing stage. And that is the stage by which you can become liberated from material affection. And the symptom of that is the ability to follow the four regulated principles and to follow the orders of the spiritual master. And chant uh, our 16 rounds every day, trying to avoid offenses. Hare Krishna. A second question from Vijay Krishna. Jai Vijay Krishna. If it happens for me to become freed from sins and their correspondent sinful reactions, what is it that I will experience? A life of virtue? How would you characterize a life of virtue? Please. Well, you're not going to get a life of virtue, but you do get a life of virtue because... When our, our, in other words, our, our, gain, our aim is not to attain a life of virtue. Our life is to attain love for Krishna, pure love for Krishna. And the symptoms of that is that when you hear the name of Krishna and you hear the glories of Krishna from the Srimad Bhagavatam, your mind is so attracted to it that you can't think of anything else at the time of hearing. And that in itself is enough to attract Krishna. You, you have to be chosen by Krishna and those that Krishna chooses are those who have a, 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 a achieved attraction for Him, attraction for hearing about Him, and attracted, attraction for His form and His activities and His qualities and His abode and everything that goes with it, and everything that goes with all those things. That's how you can tell how attached you are to hearing about Krishna, 
how attached you are to chanting his holy name. And when tears come out of your eyes, when you chant, and when the, the, the desire becomes so strong that you will not be able to live for another moment without seeing Krishna, then Krishna will appear to you. That's the goal. Hare Krishna. Comments from Daitari Hari? Yes, Daitari Das. Your answers are perfect every time and always seem to be empowered in, in the relevance to the specific individual. Forever in your debt. Thank you, Maharaj. I am forever in the debt of all of you who have agreed to come in here and, uh, and, and also express your, your reflections of these topics, wonderful topics. This is the process. To hear uh, and chant the glories of the Lord in the association of devotees who have like minds. That is the perfection. And you cannot achieve the perfection in this age of Kali in any other way other than chanting Hare Krishna and hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam and the other revealed scriptures uh, in the association of devotees who are attached to hearing. That's it. Srimad Bhagavatam ki Wait, we have more. From Davide? Davide, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. How nice Raj. to hear from you. Hare Bo. Following from the question on anger, how do we learn how to truly forgive? I'm sorry if I'm asking you to repeat yourself, your servant, Davide. You, you, well, I gave the answer already that you have to get this knowledge. Without the knowledge, you can't feel like learning how to forgive. So it is a gradual process of accepting the knowledge as it's given in the Bhagavad Gita by Krishna himself, the supreme authority. So once you've accepted without hesitation and without qual uh, qualification, in other words, you unqualifiedly accept that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God and the Supreme Authority, and you're here with that mentality, then everything gradually becomes revealed uh, with time and sincere chanting and hearing. can't do it by yourself. You can't do it by your own, the power of your own uh, senses or the power of your own mind and intelligence. They're very limited and Krishna is unlimited. Therefore, the limited can only understand the unlimited when the unlimited agrees to reveal it to the limited. Hare Krishna. From Avaduta Roy. Hare Krishna Avaduta Roy. Dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you so much for this nectar. It's such a nourishing Sangha here with you and the devotees in attendance. Regarding the verse, the pastime of Manduka Muni cursing Yamaraj. The pure devotee and Mahajan reminded me of the pastime of Durvasamuni and Ambarish Maharaj. Could you please comment on whether Manduka Muni also learned his lesson just like Durvasamuni did? Thank you. Yes, <laughs> that's my comment. I don't have the details, I never read the details. And this is the last thing from Davide. Davide, Haribo, Haribo. He says, Thank you, Maharaj. Miss you always. Knowledge is key 
and acceptance of Krishna as the Supreme, chanting and hearing while begging for mercy. Thank you. Thank you for your, uh, the expression of your acceptance of the process. Hare Krishna. And we miss you too and the rest of your family. Hare Krishna. Avadud Roy says, thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. And thanks to all of you again and again. Uh, without you, we couldn't do this. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Sama beda bhakta vrinda ki jai. Gaur premanandi hari hari bo. See you tomorrow night. Same time, same place, same topic. The unlimited, sweet, glorious knowledge of the Srimad Bhagavatam unfolding before our ears. See you tomorrow. Hare Krishna.